Hello, Hello everyone in podcast listening land. I'm Karen Devaney. And I'm Ann Barner. And, and we're, we're sisters. sisters. Welcome to Sugarcoated Murder, where we'll discuss and probably inappropriately laugh about and comment on. Yep, one of our favorite subjects murder. murder. Oh, and we love to bake. And why not combine our two favorite subjects baking and killers? Welcome to my home. And welcome to our bourbon tea. Yes. Oh my gosh. Cheers. Cheers. To that. Yes. So guys, we tea. are enjoying some of our hot toddy, which is our tiger tea. Mm-hmm. Some of our Katie honey. Yeah. Some of our um very good yummy 1792 bourbon. Yes. And a little dash of lemon. And a little splash of lemon. So delicious. And it's delightful. And Y'all are not going to believe what I have in the oven. Oh, my gosh. It smells so flipping good. Oh, my When Lord. you walk in here, it smacks you right in the face. It's an apple bourbon bunk cake. Girl, don't say bourbon. I will. Say it again, There is then. bourbon in the cake, mm. and then when you bring it out of the oven, you put holes in the top of it, and you pour more bourbon on top. Don't try to propose marriage to me. I'm already married. <laughs> that's gross. <laughs> well, that's I'm just really saying, gross. that's marriage cake, if you ask me. <laughs> Now, I will say the cake is a labor of love, which mm-hmm. is why you don't hear me actually in the kitchen moving around because I did a lot of prep work on that and felt like maybe I should just go ahead, get in the oven because it takes an hour and 10 minutes to cook. Yeah, we're going to want to taste that. And supper. after an hour and 10 minutes, I'm still not even sure if it'll be done because there's so much apple in this cake. It's so exciting. How many apples did you use? So it's a pound and a half and my scales were broken. So your average, your average pound is like three apples. I put in five. Oh, wow. You go, girl. Um, but part of the apples, you coarsely chop in a food processor, of which I have a miniature food processor. So that took some time. Yes. And then the rest of it, you cut into little pieces. Okay. Then you also, it, it calls peel for... Peel off? Peel on. Peel off. Thank I God. I never, ever, I don't ever like getting that stuff stuck up in my teeth. On. I don't. I don't enjoy it. Mm-mm. I don't enjoy it one single Mm-mm. solitary Even with bit. bourbon, I don't like it. No, no, no. No. Mm-mm. I'll eat my yeah. apples with the peel on. I will. That's what I do. I do and not other enjoy than that, apple. the only thing it's good for is some good homemade potpourri. Yeah, I don't like That's an apple it. peel in my cooked food. So no. remember that, people. Yeah, please remember that when you all start sending us your own baked goods, yeah. which we're ready to receive at any moment. Any minute. Yes, Any just minute. let us know. So it also has coarsely chopped pecans. We had some leftover pecans from our baking at Christmas time. Yes. So I use those. And I just chopped them with my handy dandy pampered chef food chopper. I love that thing. Um, and then you toast them. And no matter what, if you ever, ever have a recipe that calls for nuts, even toast if it them. doesn't say toast your nuts, yeah. always toast your nuts, people, because That's it, the it brings out, out that flavor. Right. And if it's in a batter or something, they don't have time to crunch up and really cook. And no. it brings the oils out, yes. so you really taste the flavor. It, it just, it really makes a huge difference. So there was coarsely chopped apples, regular chopped apples, coarsely chopped pecans, toasted. All of that had to be done prior yeah. to. And then you mix together sour cream, three tablespoons of bourbon, and vanilla extract into like a little liquid type oh. thing. Mm-hmm. And in another bowl, you do your flour, nutmeg, cinnamon, and uh, sea salt. Of course, um, it calls for fine sea salt. I have a sea salt grinder, That's and I enough. just use that. And I didn't I'm sure use it was fine. a half a teaspoon quite because I, I don't know. I, I'm picky about. I wasn't quite sure how that ground salt would be. Yeah. As a, Sometimes it's a, a little fine. stronger. Yeah. So, yeah. Sometimes you just have to. You know, throw a caution to the wind. But That's anyway, what we do all the time. You do your baking powder, baking soda, cinnamon, salt, and flour. You whisk that together. Now, for me, when I bake with apples or nuts, I find that if I don't put a little flour on the apples and nuts, they sink. They sink to the bottom. And I like mine to not be all at the bottom. I like a good dispersing. So I just take a little handful of my flour mixture and mix it in with my. Um, yep. apples and pecans just to dust make, them. You're right. just dusting them. Um, 
and I, it's not extra it's just what I had whisked together already and I used that together so you, you do your eggs and your brown sugar and get that nice and fluffy and then you mm. do eggs and then you alternate between that bourbon sour cream vanilla mix and your dry ingredients back and forth back and forth now this hot shot person whoever wrote this says to put your KitchenAid on medium while you're adding that stuff in, if it you goes put it on everywhere. medium and you try to add flour in, even if you have the little cover thing in, flour goes everywhere. It does. So for me, I have to turn it off because I am not a professional. No, we are not a professional. Yeah. So then you mix all of that stuff together and it comes out to this beautiful, fluffy batter filled now with nuts and How does the sour apples. cream bourbon mixture get in there? Where does that That's go? your wet. You That's alternate your wet. wet and dry. And the, are the, the eggs in there? The eggs, I, you did after the butter and brown sugar. Okay. Yeah. So you do the brighter and brown sugar for five minutes until it's fluffy. Okay. And it will turn colors. I then gotcha. you do the eggs one at a time. Mm -hmm. Then you alternate between your sour cream, bourbon, oh, vanilla, and your yep. right, I gotcha. back I gotcha. and forth, back I gotcha. and forth. And then you're going to fold in your apples and your pecans. Yes. Put that all together. And it, it has to go into, and it says a bump pan. For me, I used a tube cake. like a. It's fine. I, I wouldn't call it a bump pan. Uh, what do you call that? A fluted it's, pan. But not a, it's not rounded. Right. It's, it's just not, a yeah. pound cake pan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And our mother used to have, I know you remember this, but the best pan for that growing up, it was, it had a little lever that was attached to the bottom, went all the yes. way up the side. And when you were ready to take your cake out of the pan, you just took that little lever and you spun it around. Yep. And it loosened the cake for you. It was I've so looked nice. Everywhere. I know you can't find them because it was them. nice because it went all the way to the bottom of the pan. Yes. So it was up the side and the bottom. Yeah, and then you and didn't you just kind of spun that around, and then you didn't, you didn't risk. scratch your pan. No, the, the and you cake didn't came out you, beautifully every time. Every time it was just the the inside part that you yeah might have a challenge with. Yeah. But, Ours had scratches all you could yeah, see where we had scratched easy. it, I mean, but it, it was a great It just made such a big difference in the world that yes. I miss oh, it. Oh, me too. I'm sure if we start looking in consignment stores, oh, we'll they'll probably, probably find one. one. Yeah. yeah hopefully. Made me real sad yesterday. I was in a little consignment flea shop type store, and they had albums from when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I'm it's like, so really? sad. It's <laughs> an antique store <laughs> now. That's not an company. antique. Are it's you sure? Okay. It's so sad. <laughs> so, anyway, you put all of this stuff into your tall fluted pan, yeah. Uh, but you do grease and flour the sides. Now, I tried to use the baking spray that's got the flour and stuff already in it, but that's for that type of pan, it, it's I'm really, really not hard. good at it. Mm -mm. So I had to scrap that, wash the pan, and start over, and I did do um, unsalted butter and flour. To now, me, actually, that's I did the... regular butter and flour. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. And uh, anyway, you stick that in the oven. It takes about an hour and 10 minutes to... Bake, which is where we are. It should be done in like maybe eight minutes. We'll see. It's a very thick cake, so it may take it a may little take bit of extra while. time. Mm -hmm. But it is. Um, I think it's going to be worth it because it just smells, smells so amazing. fun. Yes, I found it on a website called Full Circle. Okay. Fullcircle dot com. We'll put that in the show notes. Yeah, and we'll. Um, and then I'm really excited because once it comes out, you take a half a cup of bourbon a half a cup of sugar, and two tablespoons of unsalted butter. And you cook that on the stove, almost like you do brown butter for about five minutes until it boils, mm -hmm. and it starts to get a little bit thick. Mm. So it'll be like almost kind of caramelly, like but not syrup. quite mm -hmm. as thick as that. When you Yum. pull that cake out, as it's cooling, you slit, put 12 slits in the top of it and pour that stuff on top Shut of it. you're flipping Then now. once it's cooled and you flip it out onto your cooling rack, you do it to the top, too. <gasps> That's so smart. I know. So, so it means in the smart. middle. So I'm very excited about how it turns out. Yeah, me too. Uh -huh. I'm pooped. I'm sure you're pooped. That was a lot. Well, guys, just just in case you haven't, or just in case you're not on the Facebook fan page, by now we have posted our sound check from today, which has a very, very special, exclusive feature. Yes. And I'm telling you, if you're not on that fan page and you're not checking it religiously you're going to miss out on one huge it's a treat but it's not it just a treat it's a it's a 
there is a talent awakening. It is. It's a t that's all I can say. It's a talent awakening. Yet another talent. Yes. Oh my God. That will be on my resume. And it's because we it's because we do a podcast. It, and that's just now what happens. Just We're discovering so many things yeah. about ourselves now that we, just we know how. didn't even know we could do. And the, I mean, it's just the abundance <laughs> oh, of yeah. creativity and talent coming out of these two oh. old broads. Oh yeah. Is just exacerbating. We're not just a couple of broads talking about murder anymore. Well, we are a couple of broads. But we're doing so much more. Oh, we're talking yeah. about murder and then some. Yes. So just saying, if you're not on that fan page, y'all are missing out. Missing out. And plus, saying. you're not part of the 160 plus best friends that we have. And so, yeah, we're not duh. Straight yet anymore exactly how many we have. Well, it's like a revolving door. These people are so fickle. I know. It's I, crazy. I don't know. It's I just, just don't crazy. even know. Guys. And just stopped me and told me <laughs> that the microphone was actually almost pointing backwards. So yeah. I hope that um, what we just were talking about, and we even did the sound check, and turns out we never even listened back to it. I guess we just checked to make sure we had voices. Yeah. And then we kept on going. So we apologize if there's a problem with the beginning, but just go back, turn it up, turn that volume turn up, up, and then it'll be worth it. So. Yeah. Okay, well, she has just taken that cake out of the oven, and I just got a whiff of heaven. So um, that's enough to make you go back in time and smack your great, 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 great grandmother. I need to tell you, girl. Mm. All right, so while you are preparing. Tell me about your murder. I have a murder. I have a murder. This murder comes to us from Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay, not too far from us. No, it's even closer than you think. Oh, Lord. So this is about a lady named Nikki McFadder. Nikki McFadder. Yes. So Nikki joined the Navy right out of high school. She was always known for her vivacious, bubbly personality. She was Aww, outgoing. Vivacious I know. Bublé. 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 She was, she was Michael Bublé before he was famous. <laughs> <laughs> she was outgoing and friendly, and that enables her to be successful in the Navy and in her job outside of the Navy, once she ends her service with the Navy, she gets a job with U.S. Airways. Oh, yes. that's smart. I know, at the Charlotte Airport. As her sister said, Nikki took her love of the sea and turned it into a love for the air. She okay. even loved skydiving. Like, this girl was fearless. Oh, wow. I don't think <laughs> yeah. I could do it. I really I don't, don't think I could. I know for a fact I couldn't do it. Yeah, I don't I even know if much. I could do it in those wind tunnels that you just really don't no. leave. Them. I don't, like, 10 feet off <laughs> no, the ground, that's too much. the wind blows so hard, oh. all the fat. Yeah, would my be jowls like, yeah. would be stuck in the back of my hair. Like, I can only imagine that's not good. And that, like, why would I loosen my jowls even more? No. Like, I'm going to come out looking like that dog, Droopy. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Droopy. Or what was his name? Deputy Dog? Deputy Dog. Yeah. So I don't, I'm not doing that. But good on Nikki because she was fearless and obviously had tight cheeks and didn't care about her jowls. <laughs> so <laughs> as a ticket agent at, with U.S. Air, she had lots of friends. And she was certainly always up for an adventure and... She took advantage of her benefits as a ticket agent and often took many impromptu adventurous trips. Oh, that's fun. I know. That's got to be the best part of being a ticket agent. Yeah. So at, at age 30, Nikki was longing for a companion to take these adventures with her and to settle down with. She was at the point in her life that she wanted marriage and family for sure. Yeah. In 2009, Nikki was dating a man that she had met via an online dating website. Oh, dear. Do we know which one? I don't. Okay. No. Mm -mm. Theodore Manning lived in Columbia, South Carolina. He was a 27-year-old divorced father of a young daughter. He had a great job, and he seemed to tick a lot of the boxes on Nikki's list. Oh, okay. Yeah. There was just one eensy-weensy little issue. Oh. Teddy, as Nikki liked to call him. Oh, Teddy. Hey, Teddy. Um, he had what some would call an addiction to the ladies. Oh, Lord. I don't see it as an addiction. I see it as him just being a dick. Oh, right. Yeah. So throughout their three-month relationship, he insisted on keeping up his player life oh, activities. Right, right. So during the week, Nikki worked in Charlotte at her ticket agent job. And then on the weekends, she would drive to Columbia to spend time with Teddy. 
On the flip side, during the week, Teddy would work his power plant job in Columbia and continue to date or talk to a growing lineup of lady friends. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. Oh, Teddy. Teddy, Teddy. Terrible, terrible Teddy. All right, so in May of 2009, Nikki told her sister LaToya it just wasn't working and she was going to have to go to Columbia to break up with little Teddy boy. Oh, Teddy. He's not behaving. No. She also said she had some stuff at his place and wanted to retrieve that and some jewelry that Teddy was supposedly um, repairing for her. Repairing? I guess she he he could fix jewelry. Okay. And one of his talents was fixing jewelry. I don't know. Does she had left mean, some jewelry uh, with him. Fixing, does that mean giving it to other ladies? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> that might be what he meant. There might be a communication um, right. misstep in there. Fix this by, by giving, giving it, it away. Else. And she thought fixing it meant giving it back to me in the better condition than when I gave it to you. Right. Yeah, okay. Right, right. So anyway, um, so... Nikki says that she's got to go to Columbia over the weekend and, and break up with little Teddy boy. So the next week, LaToya, who lived in Apex, North Carolina, I've been there, couldn't seem to get her sister to answer the phone. Sometimes that would happen, though, when Nikki was off on one of her um, impromptu adventures, oh. especially like when she was out of the country. Right. And LaToya didn't always know. You know, she didn't, they didn't talk every day. Yeah. So... Sometimes Nikki would just go out, you know, on like a... What? They were sisters? Yeah. They, they didn't, didn't talk. talk every day? Sure, but they didn't even live in the same town. Lord have mercy. I don't even know. They weren't real mercy. sisters, I guess. <laughs> they just were pretend <laughs> sisters. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, um, LaToya figured she would hear from her sister when she got back from some exotic adventure and... Um, She'll hear all about it, you know, when Nikki gets back. Right. So a week goes by, and LaToya instead gets a call from Nikki's boss at U.S. Airways saying Nikki had not reported to work in a week. And they had not a heard week. a week. And so they had the, not heard from her. Don't wait a week. Late. I'm <laughs> texting saying, We're, what the hell? You don't have enough respect to, for me to let me know you're going to be late? I know, to your job. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In another town. Exactly. I know. I don't know what these people, <laughs> these people just don't, I don't know. They didn't take the same sister class we I took. I guess not. So this was highly unusual because up until then, Nikki had perfect attendance at her job. And oh. I got to bow down to her. Yeah. That's not easy. That's not easy. No, sometimes your job just gets to you <laughs> and you just accidentally Amen. make a wrong turn on the way to work. And then you find yourself in another town drinking coffee and whiskey. Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> at this point, LaToya immediately calls police in Charlotte and reports her sister missing. Right. Investigators... Of course, start questioning Nikki's friends, and they start with her coworkers. So her best friend at work takes police to Nikki's home mm -hmm. to start looking around to see what they can find. Nikki was not there, but yeah. her laptop was there, and investigators and the friend decide to see if they could find any clues on the laptop. Yeah. So the friend was able to guess Nikki's password. Mm -hmm. I mean, good for the friend, but Nikki probably didn't set really good passwords. Right. Um, and she lets the investigators know that she's aware that Nikki had been dating using an online site. Right. So she was able to bring up the site and log in as, as Nikki with Nikki's credentials. Oh, wow. Yeah. Smart girl. This girl, she might be, she needs to go into cybersecurity. Oh, do we need to look into her for Nikki's no, disappearance? I think Nikki just wasn't real good at, Oh, you know, gotcha. Good passwords. Maybe. Like you, we're used to fourteen characters, and it's or it could now. be maybe the friend is the one that set up her online presence. Probably, <laughs> you know. Yes, that happens. Sometimes people mm -hmm. need a little push. I'm not saying I need a push, so please do not go ahead. Let me no, know no. if you need her information. No. So anyway, as almost as soon as she got on the onto the website, a chat window popped up, and some dude typed, "Nikki, where are you?" Oh, so she was like, "Hmm." So the friend and the cop decide to see where it would lead if she typed back as Nikki. Oh. So she said, hey, when was the last time we talked? And the guy immediately disappeared. Ah. Chat window closed. He was never, no longer online. But the investigator was able to capture his profile. Oh, good. Before. Thank goodness. Yes. So they start digging around, and they figure out this dude is none other, none other, other than other. other. It's utterly ridiculous. <laughs> None other than <laughs> Theodore Manning, Mr. Teddy himself in Columbia, South Carolina. Oh, Teddy. 
So the detectives in Charlotte call some detectives in Columbia because detectives know detectives. And they brief them on the case. Right. And the Columbia detectives start searching for Mr. Manning. Right. As well as any other clues that might lead to the whereabouts of Nikki McFadder. There you go. So while detectives are looking into Tenny Boy, they were able to look at his phone records. And they see he had communicated with many, many women. Mm. But they also found it curious that the same day Nikki was supposed to be in Charlotte, or Columbia, Columbia. In Columbia. That same day, um, he was texting with some lady named Kendra. Ah. So they thought, okay, maybe we need to have a little convo with Miss Kendra. Right. So this is the story they got from Kendra. Oh, wait. At first, I thought we were in Atlanta, and I was like, oh, my God, was it Kendra from the Housewives? But no, we are not, not in, in Atlanta. Atlanta. We're not even in Georgia. Mm-mm, we're in South Carolina You've now. started a rumor now. <laughs> <laughs> it's we're on like we're gonna get you Anne are gonna get sued for that. <laughs> Just know that was Anne saying Kendra. Anyway, wait, her name is not Kendra. I don't even. There's watch not that a Kendra show. on Atlanta. <laughs> no, I don't watch that show. I don't know. I don't watch it now, but I used to, and it's no Kendra are on there. Sure? So I'm positive I it's Kenya. Oh, Kenya. Yeah, not draw. Uh, oh my gosh. Now we've got that's a whole nother wormhole, guys. <laughs> Okay, this is a story they got from Ken Dra, mm. and she's in South Kakalaki, mm. by the way. Mm-hmm. So she got a call from Teddy asking her to come over and hang out. And when she got there, she found him in the garage working on a friend's Honda. Oh. He offered her the rims from the car, but she declined. Oh. He then said he needed to take the car and drop it off so she could, could she follow him and bring him back. Lord. And she, of course, said yes. Of course. Because later that day, they also did the boom boom. Oh, my. She followed him to some remote woods about 20 miles outside of town. And he told her to pull over and wait in a nearby parking lot. So she did. And she waits. He turns down some path into the woods. Oh, God. Okay. She's thinking, okay, maybe somebody's back there. So, um, is, is that what you would think? No, I would get the hell out of there and I would leave him right behind. Yeah. I would want to see whose car is this that you're working on. And, and then who, I where would do they see, live? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. But that's you and I, cause we have a true crime podcast. I guess. <laughs> we don't trust nobody. Ask question. <laughs> Ask lots of questions. Or don't get involved. Right. One or the other. So anyway, she says that. After a while, she's waiting for him, and all of a sudden, she hears this explosion. Whoa. Yeah. Soon after the explosion, Teddy appeared and got into the car with her. Oh. She said he smelled of gasoline and smoke, and when she asked about it, he told her somebody was burning trash and junk in the woods. Oh, that makes sense. Of course. She insisted she had no idea who the car belonged to until the police told her about Nikki and the fact that Nikki drives... A Honda. Oh, my Lanta. She starts to crack a little bit um, when she fails two polygraphs. Not one, but two. Two, two, two minutes and one. (laughs) (laughs) What was that for? Double mint gum. Double mint gum. (laughs) Yes. So, anyway, she starts to crack and said, I think I can take you back to where the car got dropped off. So, they put her in the squad car. They go back and they arrive at the scene where the car was dropped and they were horrified at what they found. Oh, no. There was indeed a car in the woods that was almost completely burned, completely. Right. They could see through the trunk that there were the burned remains of a body. Oh, Lord. Uh, The only obvious thing that they could figure out about the body was there was clearly a bullet hole in the back of its skull. Oh, dear. So, at this point, they know they have a burned-out car that was actually Nikki's Honda, and they suspect the charred body was Nikki, but because of the condition of the body, they were they had to wait for dental records uh-huh. so the body could be properly identified. Yeah, gosh. But it did give them enough to go and arrest Manning. Teddy. And as well as hold Kendra for oh, some more... Hello, Theo. So, and then um, they also were, they held Kendra for some more questions. Yeah. we You got some explaining to do. Yeah. So, um, 
When they found and arrested Manning at his home, they also found a receipt for bleach the oh. same day that was in question oh, at this okay. point. So he bought it the same day? So they go to the store where it was where purchased. it was purchased, mm-hmm. and there is Kendra with Manning buying bleach together. Now Kendra says that's Oh wait, they went to the video. They went to the surveillance uh, video. Gotcha. Did I not say that right? No. You didn't say oh, the no. surveillance video part. I don't think, but it could I be said, me. I said they pulled footage from the store. Got it. I missed it. Yeah. And then I was like, wait. Kendra's they're there? Like, like, they're, yeah. Kendra is the. I got it okay. now. Kendra and Teddy, she's the, Kendra's the side piece. Right. She and it's Teddy she were buying bleach, bleach together. Oh. Kendra? She says, oh, yeah, but that was just for my home cleaning. No, it wasn't. Liar. No, we don't believe nothing. No. They also find blood spatter on the ceiling of Manning's bedroom wall. Oh, my. So, I guess the bleach couldn't reach all the way up there. Maybe to not. the ceiling. Maybe I don't like know. Like a, a Swiffer sponge they could reach? I nothing. guess not. They don't have nothing. Like they don't got... Mr. Clean bars on a stick or something? It's like any, just anything. <laughs> anything. Any, just find something. Right. Yeah, no, they didn't. They didn't think about it. They didn't look up. Lazy. They were too busy cleaning the floor and the wall, I'm sure. And doing the boom boom. And did the boom boom in that room. Lord have mercy. How gross. That is That's gross. gross. That is gross. Okay, so at Kendra's house, they find Nikki's purse mm. and eighty dollars in cash oh, bro, Kendra? that Kendra said Manning gave her, but she had no idea where it came from. Oh, for heaven's sake! Well, that was a lie because police also obtained ATM footage of Manning trying to use Nikki's bank card mm-hmm. and sitting right next to him in the car is little old, is little old Kendra. For heaven's sake! Yeah, that little boom boom. So, at this point, police figure that, at the very least, Kendra helped in the crime scene cleanup and the disposal of the body in the car. Right. Of course, Manning tells them that Nikki came to his house and started an argument with him, and she pulled a gun out of his bag. Oh. She pulled his gun out of his oh, bag. that makes sense. And they struggled, and the gun accidentally discharged into the back of her head. Ricocheted off of something and hit I guess the that back of the ceiling. Head. Yeah. yeah, exactly. When you're struggling for a gun, it oh. typically doesn't turn around and shoot you in the back of the head. Are you sure? I mean, well, I've never struggled with a gun. <laughs> truth be known. <laughs> truth be known, guys. I yeah, have not. Truth is out. You yeah. don't struggle with guns. I don't struggle, no. But somehow, she was shot in the back of the head. Did he call 911? No, he called his booty call, Kendra. Oh, Kendra. Yes. But he also said that um, he said, Nikki just could not accept that we were friends with benefits. And she was always pushing him to be more. And she had a very violent temper. Now, not one person that they interviewed <laughs> anywhere in, in her whole entire gambit of people that she was in contact with at that airport, her family, her friend, nobody ever said she was an angry person. Right. They said she was the she was friends with everybody. Yes. And that she was She's friendly and vivacious. She was, and not only that, but she was a skydiver. Right. She happy people skydive. Happy people. Not angry people. You wouldn't. Well, I would have just assumed. I know people. Yeah, I do too, but I don't know any. I, feel like I don't know angry. any angry people that skydive. I, I, I know people that have skydived. Mm-hmm. And I know angry people, but the people that I know that skydive, they're not angry. Uh, I think I know somebody that's angry that skydives. Okay, well then, there goes that. Yeah. Oh, gosh, you're just shooting bullets all through my stuff. You anyway. know, just that one thing, that was it. That's true. So, anyway, we think that his whole explanation is a bunch of malarkey. Right. So then Manning tried to blame Kendra for being the mastermind of the cleanup and disposal of the car and the body. Of course, of course. Yes. But Kendra was willing to take a deal. The first one to talk walks. that's right. And she testified against Manning. So when the case finally goes to trial, the prosecution pushes for premeditated capital murder. Right. Ooh, that's a big one. That's a big one. The verdict of guilty was returned, but only for voluntary manslaughter. What? They're, they still were trying, they they bought off on the, it was a crime of passion situation. Like, that's bullshit. Yeah, but. I, I mean, think it's a load of bullshit. You gotta prove beyond a reasonable doubt. Like, I know, but I don't like it. I don't like it. He was sentenced to 30 years. That's it. In South Carolina, you have to serve 85% of your sentence. 30 years doesn't seem like enough. No. Taking someone's life. So, 85% of the 30 years means. 
he has to serve 25 and a half years before he gets any chance of release. Mm -hmm. That's not a lot to me. No, not for somebody's life. No, no. And he burned her body. Like what about desecration of a, of a, of a, of a human corpse and, and just being a douche. Yeah. Like that has to play into it. Like five years for being a douche. Yeah. So anyway, Kendra served less than two years. And her charge was um, accessory after the fact. That was part of her deal, which is a little frustrating. So, but I think when Manning gets out of prison, Kendra is going to be serving a life sentence of fear because he's probably going to come for her. Yeah. Yeah. I have a feeling. I mean, they were boom, boom buddies, but that's all. Yeah. He threw her right under the bus and and she she threw threw him under under the bus and they were busting each other. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so Latoya, Nikki's sister, says that she accepts the verdict but on both for both yeah, people because she says it's all you can hope for when the victim has no voice, right. which is true, and it's so sad. It is sad. She also said that she forgives Manning and Kendra because holding on to hate will only hurt her and keep her from finding peace. Yeah, so sense. I have decided that I will hold hate in my heart for them for her. That's so kind of I know, because that's the kind of person I am. No, no, I think it is. I think she'd be like, thank you so much. I need somebody to hate him, but it can't be me. Right. And so I'm willing to do it. Aren't you nice? I know. Wow. That's the kind of person I am, because I'm a podcaster. Oh, my God. You have another thing we can do. I know. So, yeah, that's my story. That story was amazing. It was amazing and very tragic. I feel really bad, because this Nikki, I mean, the pictures of her. I feel like you break up with somebody. You, you should take a buddy. Take a buddy. Or just and do it somewhere public. Do it the old-fashioned way over the phone. I agree. And you know what? Here's the thing. If your jewelry and your clothes are still at his house, write it off as a loss yeah. and keep going. Yeah. It's not worth it. No. So, and he actually had a violent past. And she probably didn't know this, but 10 months before, he had served some time in jail for choking an ex-girlfriend. Shut up. What? Yeah. Well, but she, she probably yeah. didn't do her homework. Because no. a lot of people don't. But I do we homework. Do oh, yeah. Like, I do homework on anybody that my daughter comes in contact with. Yeah. <laughs> so, just know, if you know my daughter and I know your first and last name, I have run your name through the court system exactly. more than once. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and if you're any kind of a new friend of my son's or even an old friend getting back in touch after many, many years, if I know anything about you, your name has been run through the court system <laughs> just to find out who are you. Exactly. Yeah. Don't even, and if you pet my dog and I don't know you, I'm going to ask for your name and number and I'm going to probably run you through the court system. <laughs> and I think it's brilliant. Yeah. We, we do it. We do it. We, we do, have it. To do it. Of course. You yes, you it. have to do it. And every once in a while, I run myself through the court system just, just to, to make sure, just to make sure I did, didn't do something I, I don't remember. Dream. I, need to check and make I have sure a really I bad memory. So just in case somebody. <laughs> Somebody said I did something and I don't remember. No. So anyway, that's my um, that's my murder. Oh wow! All right, so let me tell you about so, the case. Peace it's be done. with you, Nikki and Latoya. Yeah. Pulled it out of the pan. I flipped it because it was still hot onto a paper plate, and then when I went to pull the paper plate off of it, because for whatever reason I didn't want it on the paper plate, <laughs> it came split in half. <gasps> So, it's um, okay. But it's okay. Oh, it's going to be such a cute picture, though. We'll make it work. Oh, yeah. We'll make Definitely. it work. Yeah. Um, and then I put the icing stuff on the top. Something that you really need to remember with this recipe, once you make that syrup, it needs to go on your cake. Because if it sits, it turns into a Sick. solid, nasty something. <laughs> a goop. Right. So <laughs> that's not good. And you don't want bourbon goop. I mean... I mean, seriously, though, any kind of bourbon is fine with me. Yeah. Even if it's a goop. But yeah. um, I would just, so like, just eat it. It cool a little bit more, and then it'll be ready for tasting. I'm so excited. I know, and they do say you can serve it with um, whipped cream or ice cream. <gasps> I happen to have some vanilla ice cream. Oh, well, I'll be damned. I'm feeling it. Okay. I'm feeling I'm here for it. <laughs> I've had one little triangle of a leftover quesadilla today for my whole entire day. Oh, wow. Bless your little heart. Mm-hmm. I've had a lot of water and I've had some tea and I had one cup. I had two cups of coffee today. That's probably why I haven't eaten very oh, much. Because yeah. I, you know, I don't, I usually just am a one cupper. Yeah. So I that's probably you. why I'm, I haven't been hungry. But suddenly, when I suddenly, suddenly, I, I smelt that cake oh, and yeah. I said, Oh, I hungry. I hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I was very, very hungry. I was very hungry. So, but don't, don't tell us about your moida. All right. More, my... more moida. My Moida <laughs> takes place in Columbus, Wisconsin. 
OMG, Columbia, Columbus. Look at us, how connected we are. It's almost like we're related. It's ridiculous. It's redunculous. Redunk a dunk. Redunk a dunk. Redunk a dunk. Okay. Okay. All right. So the bourbon talking. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff talking right now. Lane McIntyre just finished up his. Sounds like a brand of clothing. It does, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Um, He just finished his. Shift work at the paper plant oh. in Columbia. Um, it's he worked the eleven to seven. Columbia, shift. where? Wisconsin. Wisconsin. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't know if it was Ohio, no, but it's not. It's, it's Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Okay. Yep, he gets off. He can't wait to go home and get in the warm bed because evidently it's really cold in Wisconsin. Evidently. He gets home, and the first thing he notices is that his dog is chained up outside, which is really strange. They never chain their dog up. Well, hello, let's don't leave our dogs out in the cold. Right. They never do that, which is why he's alarmed. I would be quite alarmed. Yeah, yeah. And upset for my dog. Yeah, so he walks in the house to ask his wife what, what's what the, the hell with the dog. He said, what the hell? Well, he walked in the door and found his wife <gasps> laying on the floor with a knife sticking out of her chest. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I yeah. don't think the dog did it. No, and she was definitely dead. Oh, no. Um. And she was a new mother, so they no. had a little three-month-old baby, oh. and he runs into the baby's room, and thankfully the baby is in the crib asleep, unhurt. Oh, my gosh. I know. Talk about oh. a heart stop. I know. Not a good way to come home from work. No. So, in a panic, and this happened in 19, March of 1980. Oh, So, yeah. in a panic, he picks up the phone. The only phone he remembers is his mother's phone number. So he calls his mom mm-hmm. and says, Mom, um, his wife's name is Marilyn. Marilyn is dead. I need you to call the police. Your dog is just distraught over this murder. I know, and I don't know what's happening because he got a little extra calm. It, so, it reversed. And he's had two littles <laughs> so far. So. Prancing. He is marching yeah. up and down with this big cappuccino <laughs> toy in his mouth. <laughs> and he is shaking it like a lion shaking a gazelle. Yeah. And then he like march, 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 march. I, he oh now he's just tossing it, and I don't know. He, I, don't, I don't know. I, I mean, I'll take it over the whining. I know. I don't know. What I can't to do. stand the whining. I know. All right, back to the story. Yes, ma'am. So Lane's mama calls the police, and the police come. They get to the house, and they can tell that, um, in addition to the knife that's sticking out of Marilyn's chest. That she had been brutally beaten. Oh my gosh. Um, now, Marilyn was eight, just 18 years old. Oh my gosh, she was, she was so young. Now, she just had a baby and she was a baby. Yep. So police immediately start their investigation. They can see that there was no forced entry into the home. Um, there was blunt force trauma to Marilyn's head. Ugh. Police were able to collect some fingerprints, some hair, and some blood from the crime scene. Okay. Um, they actually find hair that doesn't match Marilyn's. And there are blood stains in the shape of fingerprints in the bathroom sink. So they take those. But this is 1980. So I know. I know. Limited in what we can do with CSI it. CSI has not yet hit the airwaves. Right. It's not a sh- not I got yet. it. Right, right. I mean, 1980. Sugar, I was still in school. Me too. Yeah. It was a long time ago. It was, I mean, I didn't graduate until 1983. Wow. You're old. So, oh, God, am I ever. <laughs> you have no idea. So they start interviewing the neighbors, and one of the neighbors says that the dang dog woke her up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Dang dog. And, but she did say that has not ever happened since they've lived here. Right. So it, it wasn't something that happened all the time. So... Now they've got kind of a time frame of, okay, something must have happened around 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. An autopsy reveals that Marilyn had been strangled, beaten, and raped, oh, in addition my. to her being stabbed. And by the way, she had been stabbed post-mortem. So that was, I mean, what the hell? Yeah, overkill. Yeah. Three days after the autopsy, Marilyn is laid to rest. Oh, poor thing. Bless her little heart. Yeah. So oh. investigators start... Of course, asking Lane some questions about where he was the night of the murder. Um, he was at work. Right. That's what he said. That's right. He says he left for work. It was around 10 o'clock. 
They can verify that he arrived at the plant and started work at 11. He left around 7 to come home, but they cannot account for where he was at work because he worked alone. There was nobody around him, so there was nobody to verify. Yeah, he clocked in, and I saw him here, here, and here, and there was nobody who could verify where he was on break. And back then, the whole world wasn't on a camera. Right. So. so he has an alibi, but it's not like 100% it's a little flimsy. ironclad. Right. Mm-hmm. So they start to do some investigation into his past and you know what he may have been up to. And they do figure out that he had taken out a life insurance policy just three days before. Oh, my died. God. I'm so pissed. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, just, just, just a minute. I was just thinking, I always think the husband did it, but right now I don't. And now I do. Oh, wow. Um, so exhausted. they start talking to some friends in Maryland and Lane's friend circle. Uh-huh. And they do find out that there was a couple that they were friends with. Um, the guy's name was Curtis Forbes and the lady's name is Debbie I can't remember her last name, but it's let's just say Downer Deb, Deb <laughs> Debbie Downer, right? Um, and they had been having some problems in their relationship, and Curtis was a little irritated with Marilyn. No, nope, not Marilyn. Was a little bit irritated with Deb. Yeah, Marilyn, because Marilyn was telling Debbie to leave him. You know, oh. get out of there and leave him. So he was a little mm. irritated. Um, it happens. Police go and they interview Curtis, and he says that he had been out at the bar the night of the murder, Mm -hmm. and then he went over to his friend Lori's house around 1 o'clock in the morning. No wonder he and Debbie are having problems. I know. And then he left there around 2.45 and went to Debbie's house to spend the night. Unfortunately, when Lori talks to police, she says that Curtis did come to her house, but it was at 1 a.m., and he left not even 10 minutes later to go get beer, but then he never came back. I think I know who did it. Oh, God. Debbie tells police that Curtis didn't get to her house until 4 o'clock in the morning. So what the hell, Curtis? Um, And there's a 3 a.m. wake-up call by the dog. dog. Right. Because I pay attention. So back in 1980, what are you going to do? You're going to go back and talk to Curtis and say, hey, there's some holes in your story that aren't making sense. Can you please fill fill in the holes? Yeah, because at this point, they're like, "Uh, we're pretty sure this guy, Lane, is responsible because he's the husband and he's got a life insurance policy. I don't think it's him. So they go back to talk to Curtis and lo and behold, Curtis has left Wisconsin. (gasps) Well, you dirty dog. He gone. Yeah. He gone. So the DNA evidence that police collected at the scene don't give them any clues on who the killer could be. And the end and the case ends ends up going cold. I mean it goes I'm right. sure it does oh. because back then they didn't have DNA testing. Right. right. They I mean there was so much that they didn't technology just wasn't there to yeah. figure this out. No. So it went cold for twenty seven years. Oh my gosh. Twenty seven years. Poor Lane and that baby. That's right, Christopher. Oh, that was his name? Christopher. So, but Marilyn's family keeps in touch with the police. Of course they do. To keep, you know. Yeah. Like, what, anything happened, anything happened? Yeah. And it just so happened to be, stop, Trout. Trout is um, misbehaving, guys. He needs a little bourbon. Yeah, Yeah, he should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, in 2007, Marilyn's niece, says, I'm going to call the police department and get an update, see if they have any information. She mm-hmm. dials the number, but she dialed the wrong number. Oh. And what she got was the Columbia County Sheriff's Office in Columbus, but the Columbus State Police are the ones that had been handling. Oh. Well, the people in Columbia County, which is yeah. in Columbus, said, we didn't even realize there was a cold case here. <gasps> And there were no other cold cases there, so they were like, we're going to take a look at it. Yes. See if we can figure out. That right? is fate intervention right I mean, there. I, I love mean that. That is the hand you. of God leading you to where you need to be. Yes. Grow. So they open up the file, and there's the, the DNA evidence sitting right there. And they've got a hair sample from Lane and a hair sample from Curtis. 
And now we've got DNA testing. Yeah, we do. So yeah, we're going to we take do. this stuff and see what happens. We're going to so find out who it is. The first thing they do is they submit Lane's stuff. Okay. And then they take that fingerprint that they found in the sink, which happens to be a combination of Marilyn's blood and whoever the killer was. Okay. They suspect. Mm -hmm. And it turns out it was not Lane. I told you from the beginning it wasn't Lane. Right. So I told back them. in the 80s. If, they, if she had called me, I'd have said, it's not him. Right. I'm not sure. feeling it. I'm not feeling it. <laughs> mm -mm. Not, I'm not. You are a super sleuth. I know I am. <laughs> so back in the 80s, um, 80s and 90s, door-to-door -door salespeople were very big. And yes, they that, were, as a matter of fact. Right. And they in were. this particular town, when you had a baby, there was a baby announcement in the paper. Yes, there And was. when the insurance agents saw the baby announcements, yep. they sent somebody to the door. Not, not, not. not, not. You have a baby now, you really should get life insurance. Not only that, but 1982-ish, <laughs> I'm going to say, I was a door-to-door -door salesman. How about that? I sold encyclopedias. I remember door it. Door to door. I remember it. Not it's, successful at I all. I often wondered how you didn't die. I don't know. It was just <laughs> God's will that I didn't die because I was in some very scary places. Yeah, but, but Lane, he didn't kill his wife. And the no. whole town had suspected him. For 27 oh, years. That sucks that you just so, you, you live under that shadow. Right. Even though you know in your heart of hearts. I'm sure there were even times where he was like, Jesus, did I do it or not? Like, right. I don't even know anymore. Right. Because people are so mean. Yeah, and I don't think he, he remarried, but he was young. Yeah, and I get it. And people felt it was too quick, and but you, you do things. And he had a baby. Time. He had a baby to raise. He needed some help. Yeah. He needed some help. Yeah, so. in 1980, I don't remember any kind of daycares. No, there were not a lot. Mm -mm. Not a lot. So, now they know it's not Lane, and they're thinking, we got to figure out what the heck Curtis is up to. Yeah, where so is he? So they send his hair sample out, and unfortunately, because of the age of the hair, they're not able to 100% say mm. it was him, but he could not be ruled out. Yeah. It was, it, Lane was ruled out. Right. Curtis is still, mm. we're like 75% sure at this point it was him. Okay. So it turned out, too, that... um that Curtis had moved back to Columbus, and he actually had married Debbie, and they were living right there in that town. And nobody suspected them? No, I guess not. I guess he waited long enough for it to go people, cold, yeah, and nobody... Yeah, people forgot. Yeah, and then he came back, and he married Debbie. Hmm. So they start kind of watching Curtis's comings and goings. But they need some kind of physical evidence. You know, you got to have physical evidence. Well, they need his have, They need his DNA. They need his DNA. So they need to follow him around. And they need not just his DNA, but they need his DNA from the crime scene. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, gosh. Right. So what are you going to do? Call Ghostbusters? No, you got to dig up that body. Oh, <gasps> no, you don't. They were really hoping because back in the 80s, they didn't scrape underneath fingernails for DNA evidence. Oh, my gosh. So they said, you know what? We got to we got to dig that body up and see if there's I mean, any they DNA. said she had been raped. They didn't get any DNA from that? No, I, I don't know that there was actual DNA. Okay. Like, she had been you know, sexually she's... assaulted, but, but, right. but there was no, not necessarily any fluids left. Correct. I mean, for all we know, there was never any, but, you know, just because you go through the act doesn't mean you can complete the mission. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, they're thinking, let's, let's just see what we have. Well, it had been, you know, 27 going on 28 years at this point. Mm. They dig up that coffin, and it is sitting in water. Oh, no. Yeah, groundwater. So, and it's rusted. Like, it is rusted so bad, they had to use a crowbar to get it open. It was, oh, that's no. how bad it was rusted. My stomach turns just even thinking about I can't, I don't want having to, be, to any, be there. I don't want to be in town when they do that. I know. I don't want to be in town. Well, Lane had given them permission because he said, we need closure. We oh, need I agree. find out what yes. to do, but he was not there when they No, I wouldn't they imagine. They didn't want to know. So, um... They take her body to the medical examiner, and medical examiner... Looks at her, you know, body, and unfortunately, 
all because of the condition of the casket and sitting in water well, and yeah. absorbed the water, all of her soft tissue, so her skin, her muscles, like everything was gone. The that only, makes me a little queasy right now. I know. Well, let me just get through this really quick. Please hurry. Before she passed away, I guess maybe when they were preparing the body, somebody put on press-on nails. They were really popular. Remember, mm-hmm. now we get the nice gel manicures or the acrylic nails or whatever. Some people still use but, the press-ons. Yeah, but so somebody had put the press-on nails. Okay. And they were like, okay, well, it could be that, that maybe when they put the glue on or whatever, that some DNA stuck in the That'd nail. That'd be nice. So they take the tips of some of her fingers with the oh, nail on and send it off oh. to the lab to see if it, there's any DNA. I mean, it's a shot in the dark. And unfortunately, nothing. You led me down that whole disgusting, grotesque <laughs> rabbit hole for nothing. I know. It seems oh, that way. But here's the thing. Body. <laughs> here's the way the media really helps in solving these types of cases. Yes. These police, these sheriffs, a uh, our office in Columbia County, Wisconsin, mm-hmm. were smart enough to say, you know what? Curtis lives here. We're going to release it to the media that we are going to exhume this body <gasps> and look for DNA And then we're going to watch him, see if he moves out. And him. we're going to see what happens, what he does. So that was really, really smart. Yes. Forward thinking on their part. Very. And um, they put a tap on his phone. Okay. Now, even though they knew that they didn't have any DNA evidence. He didn't know. He didn't know. Nope. And they released to the media that they had gotten DNA evidence and they were waiting on the results. These cops are brilliant. They were very smart. Very smart. Don't murder in Wisconsin. They're going to cut you. They're going to get you. Mm -hmm. So, once that was released, um, Curtis, (laughs) Curtis, his little phone activity kind of bumps up. Yeah, and he actually starts planning to fake his own death. <laughs> like what? Yeah. Curtis. Yeah. Is he, he telling Debbie? Go, no, no, but he's he called somebody in Hawaii and he's like trying to Hey, I'm gonna he's come got visit a, you. Trying to go Don't down a raft anybody. on a thing and he's there's like a whole From thing. Wisconsin he's yeah. gonna go on a raft to Hawaii? No, no. He was oh. gonna go down some he was gonna tell people that that's they, he wanted it released that that's how he died. Oh, right. right. He had a whole plan, but the police were like, no, we're going we're gonna to go pick you up. We need to talk to you, Curtis. Before you fake your <laughs> own death, we'd <laughs> like to, to speak come with in. you. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So they bring him in, and they ask him questions, and he just denies. He's like, nope, I didn't have anything to do with her death. Wasn't me. I didn't have anything to do with her death. So... The police decide we're going to go and talk to Debbie because oh, Debbie. they have recently found out that this girl, Lori, whose house, he went to this girl, Lori's house. Oh, that's first, right. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, Debbie had actually called Lori and said that she had seen blood on Curtis's shirt. Oh, dear. And he had asked her to wash his shirt because it had blood on it. Lori did? Debbie. Debbie said that to Lori. Right. Okay. But, and Lori thought Debbie had reported it to the police, but she never did. She forgot. So, the police then go back to Debbie and say, hey, Lori remembers you said this. And Debbie comes clean and says, yeah, I did. I I did see blood on his shirt, um, but I didn't think anything of it, you know? And, yeah. Really? You didn't think anything of it? When your friend was just brutally murdered, just right. a few houses down from you. It's a little bit of a... You had no idea. Yeah. Debbie, you're dumb. Debbie Dumber. Right. Well, and the fact that she had seen the blood on the shirt and then Watched eventually it. married him. Loved it. After he left town suddenly and then came back. Right. Debbie does not have a good memory. I think we need to have it tested. <laughs> she, she's, yeah. She's ditzy Debbie. A little ditzy Debbie. So it's not a lot. This no, it's not a lot. Shirt, but it is enough yeah. for them to arrest Curtis. I know, but if if Debbie is married to him, they can't make her testify against him. They can because she was not married at the time of the crime. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. Yeah. Okay. And um Debbie says, sure, I'll testify against him. 
Maybe so you're not good of a well, lover. Well, I think maybe she's trying to get her to stay out of trouble, too. Well, yeah. And maybe he's just not fulfilling her needs. Maybe not, because, I don't know, Curtis is. Curtis. He's something. So she, he goes to jail, all right? Okay. And Debbie, they have a, he calls Debbie. Of, of course. course. They, they're married, and they're having a phone conversation. Everybody knows that. The phones are tapped in jail. Like, people listen to your conversations. I don't think people know. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, oi, Right. So, Debbie says, listen, Curtis, I got to get my back straight, and I have to protect myself. And he's like, you're just going about it all wrong. And she says, but I remember the blood on the shirt. And he said, and I will explain that later. But not over the phone. Oh. But what he didn't say was, what blood on the shirt? Yeah, exactly. So he confirmed for them right there then was and there, there was shirt. blood on the shirt. Yes. And that was enough to charge him okay. with first degree murder. Wow. That's not a lot. It is not a lot, which is just, when you think about the cases that have gone through the court system. And that we've had so much. Right. And they haven't gone anywhere. Exactly. Like, and now, for this case, there's yeah. no fingerprints. No DNA. No DNA evidence. We just have DNA ruling out people, but nobody's ruled we, in. We think that he could have dropped some hair, but we're not 100% sure. Um, it just, but they take him to trial. The, the DA says because he didn't, just because he did not say, what blood on what shirt? What are you talking about? Well, and originally, so it's not just that. Originally, he also had holes in his story. Right. That the two women, you know, they they kind of shot holes into his yeah. story. Yeah. And the fact that he abruptly left town. Yes. It looks, it's all circumstantial, but it still doesn't look good for him. No. But the, I just don't see anything concrete. No. Like you don't have the shirt. No. You don't have the blood. No. It was so, all circumstantial. Yeah. And damn if the jurors didn't find him guilty. Well, I'm glad for that. And they, um, and every single day of the court case, Christopher and Lane sat in the courtroom and listened. I'm sure. They were there the entire time. I'm sure they were. So, um, Curtis was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. Mm -hmm. um, just, it's just not a very common, it just doesn't happen to go. I just it just don't, doesn't happen. I, mean, so, I know it's life in prison, but couldn't it be like life in prison and we're going to beat you up every day? Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, like, Life in prison just sounds so life in prison. And I know it's not an easy life. Don't right. get me wrong. I don't want to go. But I just always want to say life in prison and. Exactly. We're going to punch you in the nose every gonna, day. Right. We're going like, to. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. Right. So, And you would think maybe when he appealed, there were a lot of people working on an appeal because they said it was all circumstantial. Yeah. You know, how can you yeah. sentence him for sure. a murder? Um, but. The original circuit court in 2011 denied his request for an appeal. Okay. And then in 2013, the Wisconsin Supreme Court heard, got the, the request for appeal. They read through everything, all of the transcripts from the court, everything that the people had submitted on his behalf and letters about what a great citizen he was. And the Supreme Court in 2013 said, no. Denied. Denied. You're going to stay right in jail. So that's okay. where he is. Where is Debbie? Um, Debbie is still living in Wisconsin. She has taken back her maiden name. And, um, does she live in that town still? She does. And she just doesn't go out very often. She stays really? to herself. Really? Yeah. Lord have mercy, Debbie. Come on. I know. Come on, get it together. Unbelievable. Right. It's well, hard for me to believe that Debbie didn't know. Something. Yeah. But, I mean, maybe she's just a ditzy Debbie. Maybe. I don't know. I don't either. But, wow, what a story. I know. I mean, Wisconsin. that's a... Wisconsin. Wisconsin. That's a lot of I circumstantial... I've Wisconsin a little bit. And I'll tell you, um, I found that story on a new show that's going on Oxygen called Exhumed. I have seen the... Advertisement, the yeah. advertisement, yeah, for I our UK friends. Two advertisement, and both of them, um, actually, 
The first one that was on there was about a cold case murder. But this jackass murdered his first ex-wife because she left him. Mm-hmm. But there was no evidence. It happened in 1973, and they couldn't tie anything back, and they didn't know what to look for. Right. But then three years later, his new ex-wife mysteriously <laughs> disappeared. Dies. Mm. Oh, dies. Okay. She's found face down in a bathtub. Oh, heavens. And, um, of course, he spawns children with each. And well, then leaves them does. without mothers. Yes. And Jackass. Um, they were able to go back and exhume this girl's body again. Was that that Peterson guy? No. What was uh-uh. that dude's name? I can't remember. Not the guy. Scott Peterson, but another guy. Another. Yeah, yeah, the cop. That's yeah, the ex cop. No, that's him. not him. Mm-mm. It's a different one. Yeah, and uh, he, this guy, did he killed the second ex wife the same way he killed the first ex wife? So they exhumed the first ex wife's body again. Her coffin was sitting in water, mm. but the it had just started to seep through, so it was only like the bottom of her feet. Mm-hmm. Well, she had all the trauma to her head oh. and had been strangled the same way. But in 1973, they just didn't they, they didn't, didn't know, know what, what to they look were for. looking for. No. And they were able to get him, and and he he's been in the rest of his life behind bars. Wow, wow. And now there are wow. you know two children out there without mothers oh. and a dad in jail because he's a jackass. His first name is Doyle. I don't remember what his last name is. Okay. Was. Wow. That's I a know. lot. That's so a lot. It's a good show. It's a good news show. Interesting. It's, if you can yeah, stomach the... I can't stomach the that. ...the exhumed no. thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but... They don't show, you know, the body. If I try not to eat, that's a good show for me to watch. It's a... Yeah. Yeah, because it does make me queasy just thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I won't get you any cake. I don't want you to be... Oh, no. I'm hungry. <laughs> Murder gives me an appetite. Oh, <laughs> an appetite for treats, not an appetite for murder. Oh, well, why don't I cut a slice of cake? And while I'm doing that, maybe you could talk about something social else. media. Oh my god, social media! Oh my gosh, we have social media. We do. Okay, so it's because we have a podcast. We're, we're so podcasters. Fans. Okay, so I want you to know. First of all, we have joined the TikTok craze. <laughs> Which I and gotta our say, kids are not happening. No, oh my god, you just have no idea. I've been lectured. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, we're under Sugar Coated Murder Podcast or Sugar Coated Murder. I don't know what my TikTok name is, but it's Sugar Coated Murder is what I told them. So I'm hoping that's what it is. I don't know how to tick or talk. Yeah, um, I was gonna say, do we even know how to do that yet? Uh, it's it's all video stuff, but it's like short videos. Oh, okay. So I did release one episode with our little audiogram on it yeah. today to just see if I could get anybody interested and in giving a crap about yeah, us. Yeah, so it'd be kind of funny um, mm-hmm. just to even. Yeah. yeah. So if you're on TikTok, can you can you find us and follow us, please? It just would be a little bit of an ego boost <laughs> just to have a follower. So. Anyway, we also are on Instagram. We're up to 853 followers on Instagram. Wow. I know. I'm so impressed. It's amazing. And um, that's at Sugar Coated Murder. That's easy. We have Facebook. We have a Facebook Facebook Band. group. Oh, right, right. And it's called Sugar Coated Murder Fan Page Group. Mm. Look at us. Oh, wait. You're just going to eat? Oh, sorry. <laughs> You were talking. I know, but we do this together. I'm so sorry. We have email <laughs> as Anne is chewing, and that is murder. That sugarcoated at, at gmail.com. And, and we would love to hear from you. And mm. then we have, we don't really have it. Well, we have a link tree that we put on Facebook all the time. Yeah. You can use that link tree. And it's in the bio of our Instagram. Um, and you can use that link tree. Yeah. You can buy some really awesome merch, mm-hmm. which face masks, they're all the rage. They we are. have lots of face masks we for do. sale. And we also have lots of cool merch, um, some really cool coffee mugs mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And then there's um, all the links to like the major platforms where you can listen to us, Apple, um, da-da, da-da, Spotify, Spotify iHeartRadio, Pandora, blah, blah, blah. You can also Whatever. ask Alexa. Is Alexa plugged in? Yeah. Alexa. Play Sugar Coated Murder podcast. Play Sugar Coated Murder from Amazon Music. See what happens. See what happens. Look at that. So that's what happened. Okay. Um, No, no. uh, Alexa, turn that off. 
But anyway, that's proof that um, if you heard that, that's proof that you can ask her to play exactly what I just said. So there's no reason that you're not finding us. But if but if you're listening to us, you found us. Yeah, you, you found you us. Found Congratulations. Us. Yes. Oh my so god. Keep listening and keep supporting us and keep sending us all your love because we love your love. We love love. We love love <laughs> and we love friends. Yeah. And we love I'm gonna have some apple cake because Ann already ate some. I did. It's it's really delicious. Oh my God. That reminds me kind of of the consistency of a banana bread. Mm-hmm. Um, the flavors are just amazing. Oh, y'all and the don't have is any not, idea. I didn't get ice cream with it like I was told I was oh, getting. Oh, dang it. But it's just typical. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. My next slice, I'll have some. Mm. So anyway, um, just remember, if you kill people, we will talk about you. Yeah. So stay sweet. And don't murder. Lord have mercy, no. And a big shout out to anybody having a birthday in January. You should go to the fan page and receive your gift. Hey, I have a birthday in January. OMG, you should go to the fan page. I'm going. I'm going to go see what my gift is right yes, now. Yes, right now. Yes. Exactly. Well, guys, we love you to pieces. We do. And we'll see you soon. I mean, we'll hear you soon. Y'all will hear us. All right. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.